Yes. I've had it was, it's been, my name is Jeff Morgan, and I just want to say, you know, the uh, legislative hearings are all online and they're archived. And I think it's wonderful because if we can't be there in person, we can't see how our government's operating, discussing bills. But again, to go back to the court issue again, we don't have anything like this. Right now, the, the courts, if they have a Zoom meeting, they'd immediately shut it down and they do not archive it. Our Supreme Court does. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are regarding that, because in communication, we have not just verbal, but nonverbal communication that's not captured by transcripts. I've heard court reporters say, I didn't get this. And I know in Tennessee, they have a situation, I'm pretty sure that once a hearing is done, the litigants get a copy of the DVD or the CD so that they can take with them. It helps to give justice to poor people who can't afford $3,000 for a transcript. Any, any comments about that? The question from Mr. Morgan was, uh, he expressed um, gratitude that the legislative hearings are all online and then are uh, archived for people to go back and look at them. He's not seeing that same thing uh, in the courts uh, where uh, if they are online, they are not archived and immediately, uh, and immediately disposed of. Uh, do we see that changing? So I would encourage you to get involved in a process that's going on right now. Um, with COVID, uh, the, so many of the Texas courts have gotten, uh, have pivoted to YouTube hearings, um, and those YouTube hearings are open to the public. Um, the Texas Supreme Court Rules Advisory Committee right now has set up a subcommittee to evaluate Rule 18C. Rule 18C is the rule that deals with cameras in the courtroom. And one of the things that they are looking at and evaluating is what to do about things like archival issues and instructions. This is really troubling to me. Instructions of anybody who is viewing or participating in the process that they can't capture the video and they can't then disseminate the information, which is truly, that's a prior restraint. If you're telling somebody you can't disseminate information that occurred in an open proceeding in courtrooms, since when is that a thing? That's absolutely not permissible under our Constitution. And yet, you get those instructions virtually every single time you participate in a virtual proceeding. So that subcommittee is going on right now with the Texas Supreme Court Rules Advisory Committee. I would call them up and say, I would like to be heard on this. Okay, thank you. I had no idea. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and when you think about the courts, remember, we have separation of powers. So the legislature can make laws that govern the creatures it creates, right? Like municipalities uh, and, you know, what's within its purview. But then there's a line and where the courts have a distinct constitutional power to run that branch of government separately. So it has to check the legislature. So long as it does not violate the Constitution. Absolutely. Right. So and that's the important thing. It doesn't violate the Constitution. Right? Right? Um, and I hope that there is, you know, as a practitioner in court, I've never, you know, experienced this until COVID, doing hearings remote or on the phone, and seeing everything. It's, it's just everything is different, and it's different uh, for the advocates. But I think it's really important that the public gets to see because they've been able to see what happens in court because that's how you educate the public in the court of public opinion you know no one can just make their way to a, a courthouse because people don't want to go to a courthouse but great things happen in courthouses and it's important to project that uh, to the public and i think you know having oral argument archive at the Texas supreme court's website is great i think the youtube live feeds are great um, and i think more people will learn about the courts will learn about how to access the courts and how to meaningfully use the courts to protect their rights. These are all fundamental things that everyone should really want more of. And a lot of the judges you'll see participate in, and attorneys participate in efforts for having equal access to justice and teaching people um, on the lower rungs of the economic ladder how to access those tribunals to protect their rights. And so projecting that, I think the court recognizes it, the high court, in a more meaningful way and, and keeping some of these things from COVID moving forward are going to be important. And so it's important that we keep pushing for that, especially while they're making the rules. Thank you. It really is a pivotal time. Uh, it really is a pivotal time, the dissemination of information, uh, that, and a time that we need folks like this to have our back and be shaping uh, the way that we're going forward.